this is John Cole with GrowingYourGreens.com. We have another exciting episode for you, and it's about a bee that you guys don't often hear about. I mean, it was a bee that I heard a lot about when I was a kid because it was like a theme song on TV back in the day. Bum, bum, bumblebee, bumblebee, tuna. Now, I don't know what bumblebees have to do with tuna, otherwise, other than like being a cutesy, pootsy branding issue. Bees have nothing to do <laughs> with fish that I could think of. I think a better song would be. Bum bum bumblebee bumblebee pollinator <laughs> because bumblebees are probably a really good pollinator for your garden and they're not often talked about you know honeybees are much more favored in home gardening because they produce something that we could use or you know in some people's minds steal from them and I'm all for sustainably harvesting honey that your bees produce on your farm or in your garden if you don't steal or take too much from the bees, because after all, the bees are not necessarily making it for us. They're making it for themselves so that they could get through the winter. You know, many commercial farmers and big beekeepers, you know, honey equals dollar signs in their eyes, and they'll steal or take all the honey out and sell it and feed the bees sugar water or corn syrup water, which is really horrible because in many cases, the Sugar or corn syrup may be derived from GMOs, and I don't want to be feeding bees any kind of GMO materials. You know, I want them to eat their natural food, which is naturally they eat, you know, the pollen and the nectar out of the plants. Uh, today I have this uh, cool poster I got, uh, thanks to my local, uh, I don't know, uh, conservancy agency, and it's actually called uh, Join the conversation about native bees. So in my area, this is a cool poster of all the different native bees in this area. And if we like go over them, there's like the sweat bee, the uh, oil bee, squash bee, impatient bumblebee, blue orchard bee, yellow face bee, valley carpenter bee, Morrison's bumblebee, eastern carpenter bee, yellow face bumblebee, leaf cutter bee, digger base, rusty patch bumblebee, minor bee, Wandering Cuckoo Bee, thank God I'm not one of those, and a, a Sweat Bee. And it's the bumblebees that, you know, can help pollinate your crops, you know. Unlike honeybees that, you know, have like a shorter kind of like, I'll call it a snout, but I know it's not a snout and I'm not an entomologist or biologist or anything, so cut me some slack if you're one of those guys. Basically, the, the bumblebees have a longer snout so they could actually reach in in, you know, flowers that are a lot deeper than thinner like the honeybees. So the honeybees will only be effective on pollinating certain crops where the bumblebees will have a larger range of crops they can pollinate, including things like natives and you know some of the common vegetables that you might be growing in your, at your uh, farm or your garden. So yeah, very important to support a hedgerow. If you do have a hedgerow, and I do believe in hedgerow gardening or farming if you have acreage, you definitely wanna have some hedgerows and you definitely wanna have some bumblebees to keep the whole system going because they are part of the ecosystem and much like standard honeybees, they are getting wiped out due to, you know, uh, territory loss and, you know, uh, moth infestations and mites and other things caused by humans. So, uh, you know, in this episode, what I'm going to do for you guys is actually I'm going to, I got a hive. I got a bumblebee hive, right? I had a honeybee hive last year. And the honeybee hives, because it was like a non-matched queen with like some workers that are just some random workers that this beekeeper threw together for me. They didn't take it. They all flew away. So I didn't end up with any honeybees to pollinate. But now I'm glad to say that I have a bumblebee colony now. And you're going to get to see that in a second. And this is a matched set. So the queen made all the bumblebees in there. And I want to go over a few differences between the honeybees and the bumblebees. Because, you know, to most people, like a bee is a bee, a bee is a bee, right? Well, no. Number one, there's like all different kinds of bees, and bees are not simply bees, right? The honeybee is basically, uh, you know, a little bit more smoother and, uh, you know, has some like uh, hair on it, but the bumblebees are more kind of furry, right? And uh, the other thing is that the honeybees may have a large colony, so they might have 50,000 bees in one colony, right? And the bumblebees may have a much smaller colony, maybe just 50 to 400 bees, so this is much less bees. In addition, honeybees can live up to like three years, and the um, bumblebees will live maybe up to a year for the queens. The other workers and drones and females and males 
will, you know, not live quite as long. Another thing about the bumblebees is that, yes, they do sting, but, you know, unlike Africanized honeybees that are like aggressive men and they're gonna get you like that dude's in your face like you know like maybe the bully in high school you know like bumblebees are more like Bruce Lee he's not really gonna mess with you unless you get him and then they're gonna mess you up and so you know they're more defensive so if you like go in their hive get in their way they're in your clothing you try to swat them and then they get pissed off then they're gonna go after you other than that you know they're pretty I don't want to say docile because they are a wild creature in the world and they got to protect their stuff, you know, so they're going to do the best at that, but they're much more calm than the honeybees that have, you know, more at stake to lose like all the honey in their hive. Since also the bumblebees, I mean, produce a kind of honey, but they don't produce nearly enough for anybody to harvest from. They just produce enough for themselves and it's actually more of a nectar kind of thing that they, that they put off in little pots inside their hive, which I'm actually going to get to show you guys. It's really cool. And the honeybees, of course, just make mounds and mounds and mounds and mounds of extra honey. But, you know, I think they all have a benefit. I believe you should have any kind of bees, any kind of pollinators, attract them to your place. And if you can't attract them, you don't have them, well, then bring them in because I can think and do think it is very helpful. So anyways, let's go ahead and go outside because it is the evening before it gets too dark. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, release my bumblebees and show you guys the cool hive setup I got. So now we're in the garden and the evening time is the best time to release your bees into the nature. And uh, this is a little box I got with the bees. Now I don't want to tip this up because it shouldn't be like tipped over or tipped sideways. You'll kind of like disorient the bees. It's not really cool, but I do want to show you inside because in this box it came with a lid. You take off the lid and they have a clear panel, which is super cool. So you can kind of like look in there and see what's going on. This is completely amazing. Although if you listen, it's like buzzing and it's actually kind of scary. So let me go ahead and uh, bring the camera and do a close up for you guys. All right, so here's the top of the box. And as you guys can see, it has like a clear plexiglass window. And this is really cool, man. I mean, these are the bumblebees. These are not the honeybees. And what they do is they make these little honey pots. You know, I don't think that's what Winnie the Pooh ate when he had pots of honey. But if you look, you know, this is not a honeycomb. These are actually just honey pots, and they actually store the nectar in there. Let's see if we can actually see the queen around in there. Basically, we see all the worker bees around in there, and I'm not really seeing the queen right now. The queen is actually significantly larger than the workers. And lucky for me, on the front of this box, there's a little hatch right here with the little uh, slider thing that you could pull up and, uh, you know, let them free uh, when you're ready. Now this box should not necessarily be put outdoors. They may have a better top and a, maybe a wax cardboard box for outdoor use. So I do recommend you guys purchase a hive with this or a home for the bumblebees. So let me go ahead and next uh, show you guys the uh, cool hive or villa that I got for my bumblebees. So now I'm going to get to share with you guys my cool hive that I got for my bees. Now normally the bumblebees might live in like a, a hole or something in the ground. But I'm glad that, you know, I got a hive to put them in. So it's basically a safe place for them to stay, right? You could leave them in the box, but I do recommend you guys get a proper hive because there's going to be a, a much higher chance and higher probability of your bees uh, surviving and living. And my whole purpose in having the bees is to get uh, and help my plants to pollinate. So uh, the bumblebees will pollinate things like the tomatoes, like the avergines. And if you guys don't know what an avergine, then I might be even saying wrong, it's an eggplant the peppers and even things like strawberries they can be helpful with pollinating those crops so you know I am growing those in my garden actually I'm not growing strawberries so hopefully my yields go up dramatically this year because of my bumblebees hopefully also they'll you know uh, pollinate my cucumbers I'm not sure if they deal with harvest uh, you know pollinate cucumbers or not maybe they'll like them or they won't I have no idea but hopefully also my yields on my cucumbers will go up too and that'll be completely amazing so the hive I got is actually called the Bee Pole Villa, and that's actually uh, from a company in the UK. It's actually called Dragonfly, D-R-A-G-O-N-F-L-I dot co dot UK. Um, they were over at the uh, recent trade show looking for a distributor in the U.S., so I was actually glad to get a sample uh, from them. But if you are in the U.S. and looking to distribute uh, these awesome FSC certified wood hives, you know, with nice copper tops, I mean, They've taken some time to make this really nice, and I'm sure this will last for many years to come. And basically, 
one of the cool things is it even has like a little door. I don't know if you guys can see that little door opening and closing. But that door is there to prevent intruders. Intruder alert, intruder alert. All right, if you remember that video game, post it down below. <laughs> I don't know how many of you guys will get that one. Um, but it's there to prevent intruders like the wax moth that will actually get inside and the wax moth will get in there and lay uh, eggs and the larvae will hatch and basically that will uh, eat all the nectar and the bees and all this kind of stuff. So it's really not good. So they have this to help deter uh, the wax moth. There are other things you can do to deter the wax moth like make a bait trap out of some you know, sugar water, uh, banana peel and vinegar and hang it in a tree. And you could also, uh, you know, grow some other kind of nice fragrant herbs near the opening of the uh, villa here to uh, deter the wax moth because they don't like heavy, strong smells. So how this works, this is super simple, super easy, easiest hive ever to set up. We're just going to go ahead and open this guy up and it's just lit, it's hinged on there. I'm going to go ahead and take this box right in there. Right, lift it up, including that little uh, opening, and make sure that opening is uh, oriented toward the front. And be very careful with your bees, man. Don't be shaking these guys up, right? They've had a hard time whether they came shipped to you or you transport them in a car or whatever. So try to be as gentle as possible because when you, you know, shake them up, there's an excessive movement, right? They're gonna get riled up and they're not gonna be, ooh, too happy. Wow, I just dropped them by accident, but I want you guys to hear what they're doing now. Look at that, they're all riled up. They're making that bee noise, and this is when, if it was open, they might try to, like, attack me or something, uh, you know, because I'm disturbing them, right? I'm disturbing the peace. It's like your neighbors at, like, midnight, and they're playing their rock music, right? You're pissed. Right now, these guys are not too happy, and this is when they might sting it. Normally, they're pretty calm, they're pretty quiet, and, and they're not going to be, you know, too angry at you. So as long as you respect the bumblebees, they'll respect you. And that's what it's about, right? We want to respect the younger generation, you know, nowadays, because if they don't, they'll be saying, what you looking at, Willis? <laughs> you know, and we want to respect the older generation. We want to respect all the animals and plants and creatures of the earth, including the bumblebees, because if you don't and you do what I did, like dropping them in a few inches because I couldn't get my hands in there properly, they're going to get upset, and that's disrespecting. So, yo, Sorry I disrespected you guys. No harm, no foul. I mean, I don't think they understand English, but they're still probably a little bit upset about me dropping them in there. But hopefully pretty soon they're going to forget about this because I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this in the back of my yard uh, in a nice uh, shaded area, right? Super important. Don't put them in full sun. Don't put them in a place that's super windy. Put them in a place where they have actually, when they get out of here and step on the ledge, they have a nice flight path. So it's not like blocking in a wall or anything you want to give them a nice flight path because you know just like when you're at the airport and the airport the airplane's taking off right it can't just take off and go up like a helicopter right they got to kind of like buzz off right and, and go up gradually so we're going to go ahead and put it in a, the back of the yard that doesn't get disturbed by me or anything and you know it's uh it's it's going to be up off the ground so my little dog oakley will not disturb the bees and the bees aren't going to disturb him you know if i when i did have the honeybees uh, some of them may have been africanized and, you know, I was a little bit concerned for Oakley because he's a little black dog. And small black dogs look like honey badgers to the bees. And so they might swarm them and attack them. But with the bumblebees, as long as Oakley's not trying to, like, get in the hive and mess with them, which he surely will not because he can't even get up to it, you know, they're not going to mess with them. So that's why I like them. Plus, they're going to increase the pollination of the crops I'm growing. So I want to encourage you guys to pick up some bumblebees because most gardeners talk about the honeybees and the bumblebees have been forgotten. They're actually over two dozen varieties of native bumblebees that are probably native to your area, right? And they're disappearing like every other wildlife creature is. And once again, these are wild bees and yes, they do sting. So unlike standard honeybees that could sting one, their stinger comes out, you know, once and the stinger comes out in, in you, uh, the bumblebees, actually the stinger does not come out but only the females and the queens could sting you, right? But they could sting you multiple times if they're pissed off and the males don't sting. But uh, once again, they're, they're uh, you know, pretty calm compared to standard honeybees and way calmer compared to Africanized honeybees. And they're not really gonna mess with you unless you mess with them or you disrespect them. Like now, wow, it's completely silent in there. They're just back to their job. The threat is over. You know, me dropping them, and they've chilled out. And that was relatively quick, just in the time I'm talking. And trust me, I'm kind of loud. <laughs> so they're, like, hearing me talk, but they're still cool with it. All right, guys, sorry for the disrespect. Glad you're calmed down now. 
and now I'm going to go ahead and open your hive and set you guys up so that you guys could harvest some of the best nectar and pollen here in Las Vegas from my high quality backyard garden. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and head to the back and uh, basically uh, pull this little lever here. And when you pull the little lever, it opens it up. You can actually just take out the lever. And basically, they're still going to have a little cardboard like uh, like jail cell thing. They're going to have to bite through to get out. So like you pull it, and they're not going to instantly come out at you. They're going to bite through that. They're going to smell they're in a new place. They're going to smell all the pollen around, and they're going to go to town on you know some of the flowers I got currently in season. I got things like the onions, and I got oh some cool like sage flowers. Oh man, cool! My Gynera Pro comes are actually going to flower. I got uh, some lettuce flowers happening, some pansies, like over a hundred peppers in my garden right now, and at least a several dozen tomato plants. And all in the back wall, I don't know if you guys can see that little yellow flowers. Those are all cucumber flowers as well as I got, you know, zucchini flowers. You know, so this is going to be a wealth of pollen for these guys. And I'm glad I could do these guys a favor, you know, and at the same time, they're helping me out. And I think as creatures on this earth, because that's what we are, you know, we, we, some people may think of us as a dominating species, but we play a role in the ecosystem, right? We can destroy it like most, you know, uh, industrial agriculture and farming and people are with chemicals and pesticides. Or we can help to regenerate it by having something and keeping something like the bumblebees, honeybees, or even encouraging other kinds of bees such as mason bees that are solitary bees with a mason beehive. Now I'm going to show you guys where I placed my bumblebee hive. And as you guys can see, i got raised beds here and got my brand new peppers planted. Got some uh, cucumbers and squash over in that bed. This bed has some tomatoes. Got some ripe ones already here in May. And uh, here's the... Uh, Sugar snap pea still producing nicely with some gobo root and some uh, spinach now going to flower and seed. And I decided to put the hive, you know, near the back wall and actually behind my overhang structure here. And this is like a, a really kind of shaded place, protected area so the bees could feel secure, right? As you guys can see, I'm kind of going back here and, you know, these uh, non-fruiting trees are, are set to come out but I haven't had time to pull them out yet. I'm gonna replace them with fruit trees one of these days, but that's low on the list. But as you guys can see down below, I have my top bar hive where the bees flew away and they did not benefit me. And on the top, I have the all new dragonfly hive with my bumblebees. So let me go ahead and set the uh, tripod up and uh, go with you guys how to release these guys into the wild so that they can uh, benefit you, your garden, and uh, nature, and themselves at the same time. All right, so now that I got my bees in place, all I'm gonna have to do is just lift up this top, which is uh, conveniently hinged, and set it all the way up. And man, they're flying around in there. They're making a little bit of noise. Probably not super happy because I just moved them. And uh, we're just basically gonna go ahead and pull that little plug out. It's like a little trap door thing. Oh man. They're really, I can really hear them now. We're gonna pull this guy all the way out and now my bumblebees have been freed. You are free, my brothers. All right, so they still have to actually uh, work through a little cardboard um, thing that they gotta chew through. So they're not just gonna come out and sting me, but what you wanna know is once you release them, I wouldn't like run like you just lit a firecrack and you have to like run and throw it away really fast. It's gonna take them some time, but you don't wanna be necessarily hanging out in the hive area. You know, you wanna get this set up and make sure they have a nice flight path and they will to you know go out and forage for their own food, uh, help you pollinate your crops at the same time. Now these bees or bumblebees are actually sourced from Michigan. Although the company that the hive is from is Dragonfly F L I dot co dot U K that makes this awesome little hive here. Optimally, I'd like to encourage everybody out there to get you know more native bees that are native to your area to put in your bumblebee box. Now. Unfortunately, there's probably not a lot of native bumblebee beekeepers out there. So do the best you can and, and try to get some bumblebees because you're going to be helping them. They're going to be helping you. And we can make the world a more resilient place by, you know, wanting to uh, propagate and include more species, more diversities in our garden and help them with pollination and also help them live and live in peaceful coexistence with us here on earth like it has been for millions of years before all these chemical sprays and pesticides and you know uh, forest destructions and loss of habitat and uh, subdivision developments 
started occurring. So my specific goal with these guys is number one, they're gonna help benefit me, uh, you know, pollinate my crops, so I'm gonna be eating more in my garden. But number two, super important to me, I wanna, you know, check in every once in a while and with this uh, closable top and a copper top, they make it very easy so I can just come back here, you know, uh, preferably in the evening time when they're kind of more mellow and just open the top up and kind of look, right? And just make sure they're all right and check in on them once in a while. I doubt I'm gonna get be, be getting back here too often, but I'm gonna get back here once in a while to check them out, make sure they're doing all right, you know, because, you know, your health is in their hands, you know, uh, primarily. And so my main goal for having these guys, because the queen bee has a short one year uh, lifespan, all the workers will basically, uh, you know, be gone but what will happen is the queen will lay some eggs in the hive of future queens that will hatch the following year. And then those queens won't, unfortunately, you know, uh, live in the same hive. They're going to actually just come out the hole and they're going to fly off somewhere and create a whole new hive somewhere else. So this will propagate or, you know, encourage more uh, of the native bumblebees in the environment, which I think is greatly needed in this time and day here in America and frankly any other country developed or undeveloped country uh, in the world um, you know so I'm really glad to be having some bubble bees as my first bees that are gonna hopefully be helping me out in the garden and that's what I like about gardening right the style of gardening I teach is you know we're not having to go around with a little toothbrush shaker and pollinate your tomatoes like some of my cohorts may teach online and they have gadgets to do that but I want you know uh, nature like the bumblebees to go around and, and shake up my tomatoes and, and pollinate things for me so that I don't have to, right? That's why I like the organic gardening approach that I take. I mean, I have workers now of bumblebees that are working for me for free. I don't have to pay them. They're gonna work for their food, which I'm providing for them greatly. Um, you know, I also have workers in my soil, so the beneficial bacteria, the microbes, the mycorrhiza fungi, and maybe even some fun girls and earthworms and be beneficial nematodes and arthropods and all kinds of other cool things are in my soul, breaking down the soil and making fertilizer for me. I mean, this is truly the way of the earth, truly the way of nature, and this is truly what I believe we should all start doing to, you know, model nature and how it works to grow the healthiest, best crops on the entire planet with the least amount of work. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have over a thousand videos now on all aspects of gardening, including uh, pollination with bumblebees now. Uh, also, be sure to check my past episodes. I have over a thousand episodes, all different things about gardening. And be sure to thumbs up this video if you like this episode on the bumblebees. It's getting dark. I'm getting hungry. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off and head inside and uh, eat a nice dinner picked from my garden tonight. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing. All right, this is John Cole with GrowingYourGreens.com to do another exciting episode for you. And this episode is probably my last episode from Hawaii. So, a hui ho. <laughs> and uh, that's because I'm actually headed out on a plane tonight. And uh, this is the property I rented actually for the week, uh, you know, uh, VBRO or Home